Okay. <laughs> okay, come in hot. Come in hot. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hi, welcome to Writer Romance. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> hi, welcome to Romance Writers Therapy. That's Marty V. Whoop whoop. I really hate that I did that. But <laughs> <laughs> what'd you do? I went whoop whoop. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that at all. Do you That's turn so away? Funny. Nope. No, oh, okay. It's on. It's recorded. Don't worry. It's there. All right. And that's Kate Pryor. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. And See, that's we... so much better than a whoop whoop. It. <laughs> no, that's just my name now. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. And that's whoop whoop of Love Laugh Witch. So. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> How you doing, Kate? I'm all over the map. <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. Oh. Uh... I mean, you, you've been telling me about your, your very busy evening. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got a bit intense in the house. In the mm. bee house. <clears throat> Just <laughs> give them your address, won't is. you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what happened for you? What, what's got you over oh. the place? Oh, no. I just, I've been uh, having, like, a weird couple of days. Where, like, so I would told you, um... Last week, how, like, I was, I sent out my arcs, and I began all this wonderful feedback, and, like, mm-hmm. so much excitement from people about it, and that, so now my mornings, I'm starting off, like, in a weird, depressed space. <laughs> oh. Like, I... it's, it's really weird. I'm just, you know, it's, it's 100% possible I'm just gonna get my period, and I'm gonna, like, oh, that's what that was. Gotcha. Yep, yep. But the other possibility is that just... Because this is something I've seen Courtney Milan talk about on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of sitting there like, I wonder if this is what's happening right now. Because later on in the day, it does get better. And it's the whole, your brain, it, the ADHD brain can get addicted to dopamine in high doses. And okay. when you, you know, when you feel like a void of that, like after all that dopamine is <clears throat> done zipping around, you crash yeah. really hard and then you just feel awful and you don't know why. <laughs> and so it's really weird because it's like I'm having these You're interactions really that are just wonderful yeah. with people. And then like I wake up and I'm just like, I'm exhausted and I hate everything and I cannot, <laughs> like, I don't even know why. And that's really interesting. It's so yeah. weird. And I'm it's really like just hoping people... it's my period because that would be easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, right? <clears throat> it's like when people like are excited about going to a concert and then they go to the concert and they have so much fun and then they come down and they're yeah. kind of depressed now because they don't have anything to look forward to. Or like when people get like tattoos or piercings. I haven't heard about it with that, but like. Oh, no. I no, know that I when. I got my ears pierced for the first time and I was so nervous about uh-huh. it. But then when I got them and then we continued walking around the mall because I got it done in a clears, of course. Of course. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> Where else? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, so my, actually, because my it was my freshman roommate. She was getting her belly button pierced, but we went to like a real place to get that done. <laughs> so we went like and got my ears in done in college. Clear. That's yeah. so funny. So you guys left the professional and went to some broad with a gun. <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> so funny. Literally, it felt like she stapled my ears, and I was so scared about it <laughs> up till this morning. And then, like, I'm walking around the mall afterwards, we're getting ice cream and everything, and I'm like, you know what? I think I want another piercing. <laughs> that is... And it was so weird, because it's that like... That only I, makes I so much sense. You know, I never cared about piercings, and, like, yeah. you, now I'm like, I don't need another one, because I. it's been so long since I got that done and i'd like mm-hmm. but in that moment it's, it was like oh what a rush that is so funny yeah so like as far as like sales and everything goes like this is great well so like i was thinking this when i was like oh man all all whole lifetime of craving external validation do oh. i really want it do i want it if this hmm. is what it feels like and i don't know i've just been like all over the map headspace it wise. is kind of it is kind of really weird. Yeah, like you said, like craving this external validation have worked so hard in like the dark, quiet corner of your room and yeah. now you're sharing it with people and they have nice things to say. And it's like, this is awesome. So great. Love it. But like there's a new level of pressure that's very interesting. 
Like, yeah, right? there's that. And it's, it's just, it's yeah. weird. What's funny is, like, how small the amount of success we're looking at. I know. It's so dumb. <laughs> I got, like, I have, like, 20 positive reviews and I love them all. Right? <laughs> and, like, um, and it's just very weird to, like, how do I put this into words? I have, like, a small group of people that are interested in what happens next in the story, right? Okay, yeah. I've never written a sequel before. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh my gosh, you've got that second then book I've, pressure. I've got that second book pressure. And then I have done this great thing where I wrote um, like an overarching series plot. Because I like those in books. It makes me more mm. driven to read the next book to see what happens in the overall series, right? Mm. Yeah. And, like, so clever. Go me. But, you know, um, I don't know how to do all of the things. So I'm really just going on instinct and, yeah, like, self-editing to a point before I have editor. You know, like, it's just kind of um, a different... A different level of pressure. And typically the way I write is so very much like trial and error, trial and error. But like there are actual restrictions and like promises I've made to cover in this book. Yeah. And that's a totally new experience. Even if it is like a small number of people reading it. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought. I'll just fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I don't know. The people who have had, like, really insane success, like, I can see why they get very, um... Yeah, like, not to sound like, conceited, in their head about it. but... No, but, like, I can see I how people it. get in their head Why they it. act that way when they yeah. get that, like, to that level. It's like, okay, I can see you were in just an absolutely other plane of headspace. Yeah. I, yeah, I, it makes so much more sense. Kate, do you want to talk about what we're going to talk about? Yes, I would love to talk about it. Um, so we had, like, maybe a, <laughs> the tiniest of discussions about this. I mean, really, like, isn't that, like, that is our personal trope. That is one of our personal tropes. That, yes. like, every episode we're like, this is the most, like, we talked, like, we passed, like, two DMs. And we're like, yeah, let's make a whole episode about that. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's what we've done. So, <laughs> I love how much plot plotting and planning goes into our plot podcast. Our podcast, pl- our podcast. That TM <laughs> <laughs> is that worth TMing? I mean, I think so. I think you put your hat on that. That All one's right. mine. I claimed it. Sort of thing. Official podcaster. Um. <laughs> I don't know if everyone will understand it, but I love it. I don't understand it. I'm just saying it. <laughs> um, so we decided that we're going to do a series like we did last season. Yes, with Gwen Hayes' Romancing the Beats. Yes. But what we're going to do is we're going to take trope and we're going to have a conversation about the mini tropes inside that trope. Kind of have an in-depth trope analysis. Yeah. And the things about that trope that, like, excite us to read and write. Yeah. And, like, I think there's yeah. been so much discussion, I think, in the book communities about, tro- especially romance, about trope-heavy mm-hmm. marketing. I think a lot of people, like, you keep seeing this, like, this topic come up and people talk about it like, oh, I'm sick of tropes. And people be like, mm-hmm. tropes are the foundation of storytelling. What are you on? Like, well, and like that, that romance gets decided to be, oh, I don't like romance. It's so tropey. But like trope is in literally form of literally every form of storytelling. Like there's not one that it misses. Like you can find tropes in every single one. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think like the biggest, I think, just a resource that will blow your mind about this and you will spend more time clicking through and opening new tabs until your computer dies because mm. you've opened too many tabs is tvtropes.com. Dot org, my bad. tvtropes.org because it's a serious. Um, because it's a serious. <laughs> well, it is. Um, <laughs> it's obviously in the name. 
it's mostly about cataloging different instances of tropes that occur in various TV shows. So this ranges from everything like sitcoms to anime. Like it will catalog those tropes and those instances. And yeah, because I only got to like glance at that website. Yeah, I just I love this website so much. And so I did a a bunch of reading on it because like it's it's just such an interesting thing because it's it's a kind of different perspective on media analysis because it's not Mm -hmm. quite like academic, but at the same time, it kind of brushes up against that you know it kind of crosses that line it's but it also feels a little bit silly at the same time because it it is like wikipedia i think contributed to by many many people and so you do get kind of goofier tropes here and there and you're like i don't think that's a trope but you know (laughs) i think that's just a you (laughs) i think that's a you okay or, wow, you watch some real specific media. All right. <laughs> I'm discovering things. You've got, you've got something specific you are looking for. But tonight we're going to talk about... Yes, we wanted to talk specifically about romance tropes and kind of do a deep dive in them. And to, but specifically into office romance, right? Yes. So the way yes. you look at it is there's like tropes and then there's like micro tropes underneath that. Yes. And so, so our overarching trope for the night um, is office yeah. romance. <laughs> office romance. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I expected you to like have a script there that doesn't exist. Do you want me to do it bigger? I can do it. Give me a drum roll. No, no. no. Office romance. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused in what direction you were taking that. Was that kind of like, <laughs> like, I thought you were going for like a Broadway was, belted out kind of thing, but then it kind of um, ended like radio announcer. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, that's what you're going because, for? Well, it was like a Big Ten, like, oh, okay. a wondrous show of office romance. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> You gotta do, like, Steve Harvey announcing the word on, like, Family Feud. Oh, my gosh. That is such a delight. Um, but, okay, I couldn't possibly do that. If you want me to try to mimic Steve oh, Harvey, Oh, no, I just, just want you to picture it in your head, listener. Have a little auditory okay. imagination for once. Uh, an auditory imagination. First it was, what was it? Meta contextualizing, <laughs> and now we're auditory imagining. <laughs> I was reading a thing about auditory hallucinations earlier, and I didn't want to use that word. Yeah. So. Wow. Um, okay, so both Kate and I have and are, I mean, I guess not right now. I'm not writing an office romance, but I'll be back to it. Um, but Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare. Is an office romance. Mm-hmm. Between... Um, Serena and her new subordinate, Dare. Ooh, I love the word subordinate. It sounds like she's stepping on him. (laughs) I mean, she's the one with, she's the one in the power move, you know? (laughs) Like, um, so some elements, like I turned, one of the things in romance that happens more often is that the, um, man is in the position of power. Hmm. And so I didn't necessarily do it on, like, intentionally. It was just the way it made sense in my brain. And I'm glad it happened that way. Like, making Serena the... But, yeah, so that was one of the ways I turned the trope a little bit on its head, which really is kind of, like, embarrassing of our society that just a woman in power is (laughs) turning a trope on its head. But, you know, we all... Mm. We're getting there, guys. (laughs) So (laughs) some other... Do you want to talk about mini tropes inside of that? Or do you want to explain uh, Orc right now? And so oh, can I can explain Orc real quick. Yeah. I have, a, I have a list of tropes just that I wanted to, like, I made myself a list because. You're awesome. I couldn't go I wanted to. Blind. It didn't work out that way. It's <laughs> fine. I'm hoping. I ended up, you know, I had a meeting. And so I was just like, yes, I'm going to nod. I'm going to nod. I'm going to look at TV tropes and I'll nod again. Love that. Um, I also, I figure as you're sharing tropes, it'll like spark things in my brain too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, okay. Well, both my books 
Lich and Orc, but Orc's the one that is coming out soon, so that's the one I'm going to focus on, are Office Romances. Okay, so the Orc from the Office is, you know, about the IT guy and this this woman from HR, Janice, and they accidentally, their paths collide one day when she's wrestling with a stuck drawer and he offers to open it for her because, you know, he's bigger and stronger than her. She, she's like, okay, you open it. And then she accidentally elbows him in the in the nose and that starts the mate bonding ritual because she breaks his nose. And that's the the thing for... That is the whole conceit like the, of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Just the, dealing with it from that point on. And the orc culture. That is yes. like what makes the magic start. Well, so, okay, I, I'm really just, because a lot of the book is her kind of, like, learning new things about orc culture, I thought it'd be really funny to have some, like, I'm trying to write an epilogue, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know if I'll Cute. get this in in time, where it's him contending with human culture. Oh, that's so cute. It hurts my heart. Okay. <laughs> that literally, like, I'm, like, absorbing how adorable that is. One of your mini tropes. Oh, one of your mini tropes that I really liked in that book was um, when they were using the conference room and mm. and then she had to stand up to stand up for him. And so it's kind of like office politics and then like one of them not letting the other one be taken advantage of due to office politics sort of thing. Mm. So like. The looking out for each other is like a mini trope in there that I really like. Aww. Right? And then in Truth or Dare, one of the mini tropes that I really like is like the elevator moment. Mm. Right? Where like they're literally in forced proximity. They're alone. It's kind of just like a moment where life is paused. Oh and, man, like, I wish I'd written that happens. down. Because elevator moment is such a, an office romance trope. I oh, think. yeah. You I know, agree. It's like, here's this moment that you are just in it together and you're alone together for a breath. Well, and, and I think what's gonna office happen? romance. Exactly. Anything can happen. You will, you have closed doors. and Yeah, so, and you have a, a, an emergency stop the elevator button. Yeah, yeah. And so I think also office romance is different than the blanket of workplace romance, right? Because mm -hmm. like if it's a flower shop and yes. like the tropes are different there. See, right? okay. I do, I think workplace romance is just such a broad term yeah. that I feel yeah. like it doesn't have a lot of, it. it like it, it's harder to stick tropes under that umbrella, you know? Mm -hmm. Because- well, there's just such a variety of things that could be happening. And a trope Another... is kind of like, we found the similarities between all these things. Mm -hmm. Well, I can say that there are so many tropes within both of them that I think work. Okay. Right? So like a competency, like turn on. Okay. Like you see somebody doing their job and they're doing it well. And like, that's just hot. <laughs> right? Hmm. Um, so a competency turn on. See, I'm kind of wondering about that because I'm like, if I watch someone be good at their job at work, I would just be like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> because it, you really you only get... notice when people are bad at their job and then you hate them. <laughs> okay, that's, that's funny. But no, I definitely notice when people are good at their job. Okay. I'm just unappreciative like that. <laughs> Um, no, I definitely notice when people are good at their job and like someone being good at things is just nice. It's just a good look. I think whenever I'm like, whenever I specifically think of competency boner as a trope, I don't know, something that's kind of, it's a little bit showy, like the display mm -hmm. of competence. It's like you do something that I could not do. And also like, it's just cool. It's got a little bit of a flourish to it. Well, because, like, in Truth or Dare, I think they both are really impressed with each other's level of abilities. Okay. Right? Dare is definitely impressed with how how driven and how 
like Serena can assess the situation. She can really understand the strategy to move forward. And I think she's really impressed with his adapted, like his ability to adapt. And that like he can be thrown in any situation and he can adapt to work it to like the benefit. And so that to me is a, is a competency boner. A moment where like, if you have a moment where just one character really wows another, like that, Mm -hmm. that is something that is going to, leave the reader even if the reader isn't there to be wowed by it the reader is paying attention to the person who has been wowed yeah you know and they're like oh he's so in about her right now well and i think there's a level of you have to pay attention to see someone be good at something yeah right like you have to be focused to realize not only that they're good at something but why they're good at it and i think that that's something that office romance workplace romance do really well and then also the working side by side right like we have the same goal and so both of our actions are driving us to the goal and so that's another part of it that i really enjoy is even like with like the flower shop romance idea They're busy. They're both like throwing together bouquets. They're ringing people up. They're getting everything out and they're doing it all side by side. And without each other's support, everything would be so much harder. Right? So Mm. every single one of your actions is helping the person next to you. And yeah, so I think that that's another reason why those are moments that I get excited in the trope. I think it's also just like a really easy way to show a character, like, because you're picking a skill that the character has. Mm -hmm. And you're, so you're developing the character in that moment and really showing them off. And it's, it's a good job to have because of that, because it requires you to, you know, be a little creative about who your character is. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't sometimes end up in jobs that don't necessarily fit our personality. It definitely happens. But like we've talked just this past week about like a job that would really depict a certain personality. Right. We we did. And. Yeah, when we were talking about, like, DNR. I was so stuck on that DNR ranger. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. And we okay, discussed, now like, I remember that, the conversation. <laughs> yeah. We discussed that, like, that job wouldn't work because it doesn't work with, like, the character in your head. But, because that's definitely seemingly a job you don't accidentally get. But, like, the jobs that we fall into a lot of times do tell a lot about who we are. Right? Okay, like, yeah. And so I think just... At its base level, this trope can tell you a lot about the character based on, like, they're working in an office or they're working, you know, at a flower shop. <laughs> because nothing else is in my head. They're working as a DNR Only ranger. flower shops. <laughs> Only flower shops. See, I love the idea. Like, okay, just kind of like a tangent. Mm-hmm. There's, like, I think a handful of, like, workplaces that, like, fan fiction writing people like it's like there's there's three jobs collectively you can be a firefighter okay. you can work at a flower shop a bookshop or a, a coffee shop there is nothing else <laughs> those are the that's the only that <laughs> makes the world go round okay that's it <laughs> that's it because i don't we got four I, stops <laughs> rarely have i read a, a just fan fiction where those jobs like where someone had something that wasn't that job you know Mm -hmm. and something similar does happen in romance where it's like oh i just want to write about a bookshop owner and it's like yeah that is the that is the dream also we like in romance can you have a trash man romance and not have it be a bit satirical you know what i mean like we want them yeah no i get you places doing pretty things now gathered like garbage collectors make fantastic money and they have really great benefits and their union is really good you know they have to have apps from like picking up garbage cans and hauling it all over the place but i think people think about that and they go no garbage is stinky i don't want to think about a stinky man and absolutely it's like for real when you i because i worked at a duncan for fuck knows how long i know i love when you just say duncan so casually (laughs) do they not say duncan (laughs) in michigan no, we'd say Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, okay. It's it's a it is a first and last name situation. Okay, we are not on a personal level. <laughs> okay, I absolutely love saying you want to go to Dunks. That like, is so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> and or just you want to go Starbs. <laughs> Starbs. Like, no one gets a full name uh, around here. Who do you think you are? <laughs> that is so uh, funny. Okay, so you're working at Dunks. Yeah, but I'm working at the dunks. 
And every day I came home with this goes for any food service industry. So mm-hmm. like don't yeah. think that you're exempt if you work at a cute little bakery or a fun little Italian place. No, you will stink when you come home. You will stink like the worst thing that is in there or you will find all your favorite smells, the sugar off pastries, the espresso machine really suck when they are combined with sweat. So there's nothing good about working at a coffee shop. No, but I used to work at Barnes and Noble Cafe, and I straight up went home smelling like espresso. Yeah, I smelled delicious. No, oh. I smelled delicious. How? It was, like in my hair, I literally would like smell my skin in the car. I smelled so good. So, Kate, I think you're How? wrong. Honey, you think, I think I, this I, is I'm a the you thing. One. <laughs> <laughs> my secret's out. I stink. <laughs> This is why I like my friends in Michigan. <laughs> I like the Great Lakes between us. <laughs> oh man! No, I'm, I think I no. Think, I don't think you're actually stinky, Kate. No, <laughs> no, no I get you. Because like when I worked at Home Depot, when I was walking around outside all day watering mm-hmm. plants, because that was my job. That sounds lovely. It sounds really hot. That sounds terrible. It was hot, and I did try to like not get sunburned. But there were a lot of yeah. bees, and there were a lot of customers asking me questions I wasn't qualified That's to answer. So and funny. Also, I love the worst everything thing. about that. I keep on picturing you trying to like try to get the bees away while you're spraying yourself with water. Oh, <laughs> like man. the hose is just really going wild, and you're like, "Oh God, my face!" <laughs> I don't want to talk ill of Home Depot because my aunt manages a Home Depot. So that's actually not allowed in this house, but... Okay. Um. That's, like, actually big deal alert because, like, Andrew actually worked at a Home Depot for a while. And, uh, yeah, I mean, being a manager of one of those things is kind of a, a BFD. Like... Yeah, and... Yeah. But so, like, They're the worst huge. thing was they were like, we're such a big, wonderful family here. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone says that, whatever. And then, like, I worked in the garden center alone for so long and... Then one day I went in to like run to the bathroom and I found out that they've been having bagel breakfasts where they ask everyone (gasps) what they want and then someone goes to the bagel store and gets everyone bagels without me. I had worked there for months and I had not known about this and I was like, I I don't even want to be here anymore. (laughs) That is... like It was was like a high school job, so... That's still not nice. Like Yeah, no, it was like a weird... (laughs) You don't find the high schooler outside watering plants. You all know she's out there. I I don't think they did. There would be rainy days that I would just be like, am I supposed to still water the plants? <laughs> Who do I ask about this? Oh God, I wish no. I had goofed this off so more. Funny. I know, right? Like, I, I was so such a diligent uptight. person. And like, I really thought, put your, po- put your phone away. Don't, you know, waste company time. It's fucking Home Depot. Do what you want. Unless you're like paying rent. If you're a teenager, I don't care where you're working. Slack off. Well, and, like, also, like, don't waste company time. Like, why do I have to advocate for the company? They don't advocate for me. Yeah. They're not buying me bagels. Get get the fuck out. They're not buying me bagels. (laughs) They are not buying me bagels. Literally the only person. I'm taking this to HR. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So back to Janice. Tell me something. So back to Janice. Uh... (laughs) Janice would buy you a bagel. Janice um, would find whoever didn't buy you a bagel and be like, "Yes, we're not doing this again." That is her one it, personality trait. She is fiercely protective of people. Yes, especially and if she, she would, likes you. She would say it politely to them, but in her head, she'd be like, "What the fuck, motherfucker!" So like, I know she would the, be staring love, daggers. That is another trope of the office that I absolutely love where like there's the professional behavior on the outside and then the internal monologue that's not professional at all. Oh yeah. I, no, I love, love that. And like not even just in like a conflict situation, but also in like a romantic situation where they are thinking like I should not be subjecting you to such terrible like things in my head, but I am. But on the outside they're totally behaving properly. Mm. And I think that's delicious. It is. Um, so I actually have a list of tropes I want to get to. Okay, please. Please, 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 please. Because apparently okay. I didn't write them down, but I'm like, oh, all my thoughts. 
Um, okay, so there's the against company policy as mm -hmm. a micro trope, which I which is in the orc romance because mating yes. is against company policy on company it time. It is also it is <laughs> against uh, it is also in truth or dare mm. and like mm -hmm. it is kind of like it is a real life thing that like yeah if someone is in especially if there's like a power dynamic over you yeah yeah then you should not date them you should really think about not dating them yeah but i think yeah but this is fantasy yeah it's it's safe yeah you can do what you want it's safe. yeah read the books you want <laughs> i think it's fine enjoy yeah like, okay so what's your Oh, that is the fantasy. It's that this person yeah. is your, they're off limits for one reason or another. Yeah. Either you have power over them or they have power over you. And or it's yeah. just, you know, like something, it's forbidden. Forbidden fruit <laughs> is the trope. And I think that's a really delicious way to start, I think, a romance. I don't think it can sustain it the whole way. But no, I think it does, be... you know, it starts things off and then it kind of creates this ending tension of like, how are we going to mm -hmm. solve this now that we're actually deep in it? Okay, so another trope you wrote down. Another trope, uh, career versus man is what it says on tvtropes.com, but dot org. <laughs> dot org. <laughs> um, it because it's serious. <laughs> it's, it's very serious. <laughs> um, Which like, you know, I think it's. That kind of whole, the, what are they called? The different types of story. It's like man versus nature, man versus man, man versus himself kind of thing. Got you. I think it's yep, kind of I imitating understand. that because uh -huh. the article did go on to talk about how this trope is usually applied to women only. Or yeah. Not only, but mostly women because women are usually made to choose, you know, between a man and their career. Yeah, romance it's very much the career. Hallmark trope. Yeah, and like, like literally Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I said it and, and I like had the brand in my head and I was like, wait, they might not understand. That's like hole and hole. <laughs> oh, like, uh, like hole with an H and o a uh, yeah. hole with a W-H. Because yeah. when we were saying wholehearted, okay, yes. All right, yeah. all right. Yep. Yes. But okay. Yeah, it's, it's. But that is kind of a tension creator, and that I think that's maybe it's not as delicious a trope as you know the whole forbidden fruit part. But it mm -hmm. is that aspect of like it, it is very like common in the office tropes for like that to be your kind of final tension. Mm -hmm. uh, the the other one, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, the next one on my list is possibly my favorite because I have okay, three I'm different so names for it. Okay, um, desk sweep of passion. <laughs> Slash professionals do it on desks. Slash pencil pushing. <laughs> oh my god, you're so funny! <laughs> oh no! I think it should be called that. Like, the first one describes it perfectly, but I do think yeah. pencil pushing is the best name. <laughs> That's so funny! <laughs> Please repeat them. Oh. <sighs> I think the middle one's actually my favorite, but I don't remember Professionals what it is. do it on desks. Yeah, that's really funny, but pencil pushing is the one. Pencil, <laughs> for sure. 100%. And this, this, this episode has a name. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Glad we found it. Because <laughs> I'm picturing the pencil pushing with fingers, and then I'm picturing the penis. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for phrasing it like that. <laughs> Picture the penis. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. I need to tell okay. you something. Wait, wait, wait. So, um, I was doing the edits that Ali sent me, and okay, one of her comments just made me die on impact. Uh, let me find it. <laughs> Because I sent it back to her, and I'm like, I want to scrapbook this. <laughs> Aww. Okay. Um, she said, this makes it sound like they were using a hole punch as a sex toy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what, uh, I'm going to do that again. The line was, so me and okay. Kent were being wildly inappropriate with company property. And she said, it sounds like they're using a oh. hole punch as a sex toy. And I'm like, that is so funny. <laughs> God, God I wish I wrote that scene now. I don't know how uh, I would do it, but but it would happen now. Oh God. 
I mean, I don't like anything about. Maybe it wouldn't be a hole punch. In my brain. No, it maybe be. it would be. I don't know. Pencil. <laughs> That doesn't work. No, nothing works. No. Here, babe, uh, look at my coffee mug. <laughs> I have all these. Yeah, staples. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a substitute for a hole punch, but I'm gonna keep on thinking about this. So look at my stapler. <laughs> That's getting into like some weird territory. I'm gonna get Yeah, into... oh yeah, stapler all right, really we're makes going. me uncomfortable. <laughs> um we'll okay, so that other tropes are a sexy secretary, which I think is, you know, just kind of mm-hmm. well known. And I think yeah. that's kind of what I was doing in Love Laugh Witch. This, mm-hmm. this is basically Lily's only personality trait. <laughs> no, she's good at her job too. She is. She is. No, and like you are really boiling her down to like her trope, but she is like, she's a full fledged character. You did a great job. I mean,. <laughs> when I was writing her, I was very much like when I was reading those chapters aloud to our little writing group, uh-huh. the Smut Coven. Um, yes. The Valley Girl accent I did for her was <laughs> this is like, this is her personality. <gasps> that is so funny. Yeah. I just wanted like- her to like have that that air, but also be like super competent. Just a little twist. Um, I love that because... I feel like, um, for one thing, it's very sexist how much we decide how particularly women talk Mm -hmm. and that being connected to their level of competency. It's kind of that, that Elle Woods dynamic. Like she looks, she's she's blonde as the blonde stereotype gets. She's pink and fluffy and frilly. And she talks with that, you know, like it's hard. (laughs) You know, that yeah. she's very... And everything has a smile on her face. Like, yeah. Yeah. And people always just kind of dismiss her. But she is yeah. smart and she does... She gets done. Yeah. Not that I um, wanted um, Lily to be Elle Woods. I just kind of wanted that vibe. Yeah. No, I love that. Well, then every time I was reading Truth or Dare to the group, I always felt bad about not doing the Irish accent, but I was like, there's no way. There's no <laughs> I'm way. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you did the Irish accent, <laughs> people I who can't. were not listening would be offended. I just... <laughs> the people who were not listening. <laughs> the, Listen, uh, closest I thing. just... It's because I know you wrote that book to make Anna read it. And we oh wanted to hear her attempt Irish an Irish accent. accent yes. And we knew she couldn't do it. Because oh, just, just fun fact, Anna is Texas. She is Texas. And and she's is from Texas. Texas. <laughs> and so she just kind of comes through her voice. And the, the Texas and like, Irish was really what we were looking for. Oh, to. it was lovely. It was it was everything. It was something else. She did a great job. It was, we it was everything it. I wanted it to be. You should get she her to would read the audio for book. Us. <laughs> she would do it. She actually she would. She would. <laughs> I forgot to take her up on it because she was like, hey, if you publish this, let me know. I'll do like a live on Instagram <laughs> oh, reading the first real? chapter. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. I can't yeah, believe I should forgot. Go ahead and do that. So our dear friend Rebecca Conrad's about to do oh, it for us. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, Kate, what else did you have written down? Uh, so there's the sex at work trope, which you know, kind of goes hand yeah. in hand with the desk sweep of passion. Absolutely. Um, well, but like there's so many more locations. There are, and which you know brings us For back to the elevator. Work trip. Yeah. Oh, that's actually my next one. The business trip, quote, quote, quote. The business trip. Yes, that's in Truth or Dare, and that one is very fun. <gasps> um, okay, a work sanctioned event. Mm. When like, that's when they lose control. Like, yeah, I, that's I love that's that. what the original Truth or Dare kind of started out as. Like they were yeah. together on a business trip, and they were already well, pretty deep in it. I think they already knew yeah. and hated each other. Well, I've removed the hate part. Okay. Well, and it wasn't that she hated him, but she felt like he hated her. But in uh. reality, he was just trying. He was being aloof because he was trying to like have distance, and that was in the original iteration. Um, but I've taken that out. So now there's just like a purely, there's a lot of chemistry. And the only way to handle the chemistry is for them to be incredibly like rigidly professional. But then they're put on the business trip. And that professionality just, you know, just keeps withering the fuck away. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. So I, I guess another more that part. Are... Oh, no, you go. Okay. Ooh, another one I love is like when you have the like workplace attire, right? So workplace like a suit. attire. Okay. Yes. And then they see them outside of work and they see them. Oh, and like, then you get to wear their like, own your... work. <gasps> and like, I love particularly when it's like they happen to just be at the same place, right? Like maybe they are both at the same restaurant and they, or mm. the same cafe and they see each other that way. Or maybe they're at the same event, right? Yeah. Like they both have the same hobby and they didn't know it about each other, but they're also seeing each other in their own clothes for the first time. I love that one. Oh man, not to be a wee, but like that's a trope in a lot of like romance manga or it's oh is it seeing you like because you know they're always high schoolers so they're always like oh in their high school uniforms and so then like it's the oh my gosh i'm seeing how you dress outside of school and it's just such a like huge moment that's so funny you know i had never really considered like oh because it's like this is how you express yourself this is your personality kind of blooming in front of you you get to kind of express like what subgroup you're in yeah. Right? Like, what, who's like, your clique? Well, your and, like, clique. also, like, where are you drawn to? Yeah. Right? Because, like, like, I can only think of, like, you know, forever ago. But, like, if you're, if you're emo, you are drawn to emo music. You know? Mm. Like, we know who you listen to these days. You know what I mean? Like, um, and so it's a great way to. Unfortunately, I miss the emo era. I wish I'd grown I, up in it. Like, I would like my, like, amount. two years. Two years. Kate, you would have been a spectacular emo. Oh, like, no, I wouldn't you have, would have I been... didn't have enough hair dye. Think... Like, I didn't have access to hair dye, and that's really what I needed. I was somewhere around, like, scene kid. Okay. Which isn't emo. It's a little bit more, like, alternative. Mm. Right? Okay, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, scene was very much its own. I always yeah. think of like the neon highlights and checkered hair. Yeah, you know, that... with the really drastic bangs. But I was also in rural Michigan, <laughs> so so none of that. <laughs> so none of that. None of that. Just um, people, but there were their hair over their face, like Absolutely. half over their face. Well, and wearing band t shirts. And, and band t-shirts. <laughs> yes. And ripped jeans and those fingerless gloves. Yes. Gosh. I'm also and, me yeah. and like the amount of effort that goes into something is really going to decide how much like commitment it gets. Yeah. Right? Like I'm not going to do this every day. I mm. might do it one day, but I'm going to just jeans and t-shirt it most of the time. And See? my hair's going to go in a pony. And like that's going to be my life. I did kind of a similar thing because, like, I just, I just lived in sweatshirts, and yeah. I still, you know, especially and in the winter time, so I stole so many do. sweatshirts. My husband likes to give me such a hard time for like the sweatshirt I stole from him for like an entire year, and like I'd be wearing it, and we're about to go outside into the cold, and he's like, "That's my sweatshirt." I'm like, "Yeah, do you want it back?" He's like, "I'm not going to take the warm clothing off of your back right now, and then <laughs> have you walk to your frigid car?" No. Don't give me the sweatshirt. So, but we still own it. Mm. So. It's shared. It's shared. It has. It's been with us for a long time now. Oh man, what were we? Okay. Uh, we were talking about um, the trope where like workplace clothing and then outside of workplace clothing, and how well, so, then we got on high school clothing. So this is kind of like kind of weird for me. Like, so you really enjoy this trope, but for me, I think there's something. I'm having a hard time nailing down, like, it it is kind of a downer comment. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Um, ready. What's up? So I think the whole attraction, the whole enjoyment of a office romance is you, it's about being stuck with another person in this spot. And, you know, you're both, you're just here every day. You cannot leave. You have all this time with them. Wouldn't Mm -hmm. it be great if it was someone who you know, excited you and who every moment that you're kind of like doing nothing, just kind of in the same space felt tense because they could say something and then you could say something back and your heart would like flutter Mm -hmm. a bunch. You know, I think it's that Mm -hmm. kind of a feeling. 
Okay. But once you bring it back into the outside world, it kind of, for me, it like, the the premise of what an office romance is to me falls apart. You know, it's like, okay, well, now we're out in the world and we don't have to see each other. And it's like, suddenly okay. there's so many more people in the world that exist. And, you know, we're not just confined to this small space and this small selection of people that you're trying to, like, pick one or two to be friends with. Or not even friends, just kind uh-huh. of a little bit friendly <laughs> just to get through the day. And once you're out in the world, it's like, okay, are you actually the 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 most exciting person here or are you just the most exciting person I was trapped with? Okay. So I have a couple <laughs> arguments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, like, um, I think that romance, you should find a reason. Like this is the thing outside, that yeah, like yes. you do need to kind of, if not confront head on, I do think you need to make it clear that this, this person is worth sticking around for outside of the office. Well, Okay, so psychologically, we are going to find, like, if we're around, like, the same group of people, we're going to find somebody that we're attracted to. Yes. Right? Like, familiarity is going to make somebody attractive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And so when we remove them from that setting, and now there are other options, but you still find that person attractive above everybody else, I think that is a really great part of that trope. Okay, right? so that's that's a fantastic way to fix it then. But an example of this going really well, in my opinion, is Enemy of, Enemies with Benefits by Roxy Noir when they're at the bar and uh, Eli's there with his brothers and Violet walks in and Eli's having a conversation with his brothers, but now Violet's there and he can't stop looking at her and focusing on her. And like, it's literally a joke in the dialogue with his brother's conversation around him that he's like not registering, but like it's happening. You and have told me you have recounted this moment, these pages to is, me so many I times. I sent them. <laughs> like I you sent just them love to this you. moment so much. This moment is romance perfection. <laughs> Cause it is like so funny and it is, it is so it's like one of those things where he's not, He's not recognizing in himself that he is noticing Violet, but there's evidence from the group around him that that's exactly what he's doing. Mm. Right? And so I think that is... Oh, man, you are not even with us anymore. You are just all in. Yeah, he has now entered a fugue state. Like, it is so good. Like, that that book is particularly good for... um, it's rivals to lovers, but it is a workplace romance. And it's it's really good for an example if anyone's looking for one. Outside of ours, obviously. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's one of the books that, like, that moment, I think, is really great at taking them out of their workplace. And it's still establishing a new dimension to their chemistry and their interest in one another. And I think that that's what's important when you do take them out of their workplace is changing the chemistry just enough. Yeah. Yeah. That the tension's still there and the interest is still there. That it's not just because, like, they face each other in the same room. Yeah, it's like... They're, if, they're what each other sees. Yeah. I think it's that whole, if someone got another job offer the next day and then they could go somewhere else how much of your tension would you have left standing? Mm -hmm. And I know like a lot of plots do get constructed on, oh, we're fighting for the same promotion or Mm -hmm. we're like, we can't do this because, you know, I'm your, your subordinate or you're my subordinate, one of those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like there are internal reasons, but I do think there, there should also, because I think, At some point, the reader does start to wonder, like, okay, you've you've been thirsting for each other for 60, 70% of the book now. And it's like, Mm -hmm. well, if you're so serious about each other, and if the job isn't like a huge, this is the job of my life, this is the passion I've been training 20 years for kind of thing, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, how... 
Would you, would you want to, like, if you did put, like, <laughs> like, why wouldn't you just change jobs? Yeah, why wouldn't you, if you, if this was something you really wanted to explore, what, what's stopping you? Mm-hmm. What's stopping you from making it work? Well, I think there's a lot of roadblocks you can put in. Right? You can. Someone... You couldn't put in a lot of roadblocks, but. Yeah. Especially, I'm just saying, like, like, with the American health system. Well, so it's, it's that Lisa Kleypas, um, I think she tweeted this once. Was mm-hmm. it her? Was it her? Was it maybe Sarah know. McLean that said it? I don't know. What just, okay. What, what did they one say? of them. <laughs> one of them said this. I don't know who. But, or one of them tweeted it. And it was, the question you should always be asking yourself when writing a romance novel is, why can't they be together right now? Yeah. So every chapter you need to ask yourself, what's stopping them? Mm-hmm. And if the stops feel artificial or just kind of not even artificial, um, the word I want is really more superficial. Okay. Um, you know, it feels like you're it, the characters are using this as an excuse at any point. Then I feel like you've weakened that tension enough mm-hmm. that you need to find a better source of tension. When it's such an interesting balance to strike because you have to be weakening that tension to a degree, right? You have to be finding, I don't the know, wiggle that, that's more than I have brain power for right now. Yeah, no, I get that. What do you think, Kate? Any final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts are swivel chair antics and firings, firings are the same thing as being, as dying. <laughs> I was hoping you'd share that one because that was like one of the funniest, you told me that story, right? Like someone like was quitting and someone else was like, was this not you that showed me that? I, I don't okay. know. Okay. I know it's like a um, trope that definitely happens in Love, Laugh, Lich because <laughs> or it's kind of messed nice. with because it's like, um, Randall, you're fired and you maybe died because we th- opened up a pit to hell on the floor and that's how we yeah. fired you. <laughs> a wrongful termination. <laughs> that was so good. I was talking to someone and like someone in the office was quitting and it mm-hmm. was like a group text and like they're like well i mean you're dead to me now <laughs> like, <laughs> don't this talk might to as me. well be your funeral <laughs> like, we're not real of... friends <laughs> yeah. don't talk to me <laughs> well just the acknowledgement of like we're not going to continue like it was great while it lasted you know <laughs> yeah are you cool doing final thoughts right now or am oh, i rushing you are, along are we doing no i'm good doing final thoughts um okay okay <sighs> Final thoughts are, I think where you work is like such a fantastic place to kind of let you or your mind wander and kind of come mm-hmm. up with scenarios. But at the same time, it's like, actually, no, I'm scratch that last part. There's no but. <laughs> I think that's a great way to, if you find yourself spending a lot of time in a place that makes you come up with those scenarios, then that's actually a really great source for especially if you have ADHD, a really <laughs> great source for ideas. Like I, I'm I've talked about the whole go for a long drive. If you feel like you've emptied your creative well and you've got nothing and listen to the radio and just let your mind wander or go for long walks, like that kind of a thing where you mm-hmm. have nothing to do and your brain just has idle space. This is fantastic. And it is also one of the most challenging things for me to do because oh, I'm, it is always very hard. Putting, I'm always putting input in, right? Mm. So like I have a podcast going, I have books going, I have um, music going, like I am always putting input in. And so like when I'm really, when I'm realizing like I have nothing in the well, I'm like, okay, stop listening to everything and just think, like just let your brain be. And that's a really hard thing to do. It is hard to do. I always find myself doing it best when I'm not trying. And I think not trying is such a hard thing to mm-hmm. especially when yeah. you're always in trying mode. It's like, how do I turn I it know. off? All right, what's yours? Okay, mine, because I just put I just put my husband and I just put uh my desk in my office and I have an oh. actual door and a comfy chair. So mine is like have a comfy place to work. Yeah, Aww, that's nice. I like yeah, that. I'm excited. It's nice. It'd be weird to put um, yourself in a deliberately uncomfy place, but like, I get you. Make your sa- space yeah. optimized for yourself. Yeah. So the places that we're at, 
places that we're at. Um, you yeah. are on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. Twitter. Mm-hmm. As at Marty V author. That's me. That's pretty much and you then, everywhere, right? That's me everywhere, yeah. And then Kate is same situation at by Kate Pryor at TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I have a newsletter. Kate has a newsletter. <laughs> we both have books. You can get Truth or Dare. Yeah. Uh, you can go I'm read like, our office romances and like yeah, highlight all the that's tropes. Your that's your homework. <laughs> that's your homework. It's your homework. It's uh, mandatory. Go do it. <laughs> neither of us want to check your work. So <laughs> Yeah. No, no. I'll check your work. Take pictures of your highlighted <laughs> tropes. Post them I on really- Instagram. Tag me. Um... You know what? No, that's Kate, so fucking right. involved. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have but to. But I would love it if you don't. did. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize like how much Kate was onto something until just now. Like, uh, you're so fucking smart. Let's honor Kate Kate's brain again. Um, my my specialty is giving people busy work. <laughs> um, because like when people are annoying me in my house, I'm like, can you go do this for me? That's hilarious. So it is actually your specialty. Actually, yes. Yes, that's amazing. Um, and if you like our podcast, please subscribe, like, yeah, yeah, no, share. The podcast is important too. Don't just support um, the books. Yeah, I mean, please support the books. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you also, you know, wanted to leave a review, that'd be cute. We think that would would be adorable, you know. I saw the other day we have six reviews. What? What? Or six ratings? I had no idea. I, don't know. I opened okay. up Apple Podcasts by accident. Oh. I don't, like I don't use this, but there's like six so six ratings or something, and I was like, mm, cool. That's awesome. Well, I'll have to check too. <laughs> um, but Kate, do you have anything else you want to say? No, that's Are it. We just say Go bye? forth. Okay. Go forth in office romance bliss. Aw, please do. Bye, listener. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>